Hi, I'm Jai. I'm 16, I live in Tasmania, and I love making craft and fashion. What I'd really like to do in the next couple of years is develop my own uh, clothing line and uh, be able to just have craft and, and sewing as my life instead of a job. The best thing about my hobby is that once it's made, you get to wear it and watch your friends wear it and it's really exciting to see it in action. The piece that I'm most proud of is the suit that I made for my grade 10 formal. It was a real complex thing which I didn't think I could do, which I managed to complete. That suit took me about four weeks, which is the longest time I've spent on one project before. <laughs> um, one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made was sewing a silk chiffon shirt. I ended up having a huge hole in it and I learned just to slow down and that, you know, sewing has lots of problem solving in it. You know, if you've got that huge hole, you're just gonna make it happen. You're just <laughs> gonna make it work. <laughs> I'm all self-taught. I'm, um, I should probably start saying um. I'm taught myself to sew and to craft, but now I'm getting um, more courses and professional training to advance my skills. So I get inspired all the time and have all these ideas in my head. I should probably write them down, but I don't. They're just in my head. But the most important thing is that you just complete your project. I loved making things when I was little. One of the biggest memories of my first craft and sewing was that my nan brought a kid's sewing machine and I made clothes for my sister's doll. The weirdest thing I've ever made is a suit made out of naturally dyed onions. I boiled the onions for 10 hours and then dyed the clothes and they were really smelly but looked great. <laughs> The thing that I wish someone told me before I started was to pick my project before my fabric because I have this huge room of fabric and no project. <laughs> so the advice I'd give to someone would be to stick with it because sometimes your projects aren't gonna work out but you just have to go with it. Make sure you finish it and just drive through. It's really exciting to see it in action. Yeah. <laughs>
and no matter what your measurements are, we always divide by 6.28. Now we'll put that in our calculator and 11 centimetres is our radius. Now that we've done our maths, we can start making our pattern. So we're just going to square off. Now measure down 11 centimetres or whatever your radius was. Now moving your ruler around, you're going to place a mark at 11 all the way around. I'm making marks every couple of centimetres. OK, now we can join up all the dots. Now measure down however long you want your skirt to be from the curved line that we just made. Now we can join up all the dots. And now, cut it out. Now on the left and right, mark fold so you know where to cut on the fabric. Our pattern's done. Let's set that aside for the moment. Grab your fabric. You'll probably need about two metres off the roll just to be safe. You want to fold it in half and in half again. Place the folded edge at the top. Now grab your pattern and place the smaller curve at the top of the fabric. Now you can pin all around that pattern. With your scissors, you're going to cut the smaller curved edge and the larger curved edge. Now take out all the pins. Okay, place your pattern aside and it's time to reveal our big circle. <laughs> Fold it over and this is our waist. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add elastic to the waistline and hem the bottom. Remembering your waist measurement from before, we're going to cut the elastic to length. So my sister's waist was 66, so I'm measuring out 66. And now we can sit the rest of the elastic to the side. Using your sewing machine, sew both ends of the elastic together. You want to make sure that you've got a zigzag stitch on for this. And you want to reverse over this a couple of times to make sure it's nice and strong. Now our elastic is all sewn together. Now pin your elastic to the waistline. Now remember when sewing, you've got to put right sides of the elastic matching right sides of the fabric together. The right side is the pattern side and pin in place and then sew all the way around. Okay, all done. Now we just have to flip the elastic and as you can see, it's on the right side. Now all we have to do is hem the bottom. To do that, we just have to fold the edge in one to two centimetres and sew with a straight stitch all the way around. Don't forget to back stitch at the start. Be patient with this, it could take a little while. There we go, the perfect circle skirt and the perfect present for my sister. Hey guys, I'm in Melbourne to catch up with my friend Adam and today he's going to help me build a tent. Hey Adam. Hey Jax, how are you? Good, good. You look ready to go. Definitely. But I was thinking, are you sure you want this to be an indoor tent? Because I can turn it into That's an outdoor. snakes. What? And spiders. Huh? No, and bugs, the buzzy and they bite you and they've got things we oh, no, 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 calm down, calm down. It's okay. We'll keep it as an indoor tent, alright? Okay, good. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and here's what you're going to need to make it. Some scrap timber, a tape measure, a cordless drill, a 19mm spade bit, a 25mm spade bit, four pieces of dress pine. That's 42mm by 19 and 1500mm long. Some 25mm dowel and two pieces of 19mm dowel. And a pencil. Now let's put the dowel aside to make some room. Now with this pine, I'm gonna make a 25mm hole at the top. I'm coming down a little bit so they cross over. And for the holes, I'm measuring down 100 millimetres on all the pieces. Now it's time to drill our holes, but just make sure that you have an adult to do it for you. Now at the other end, we can flip it over 
Now we're going to measure up from the bottom 25 millimetres and then we can drill our smaller hole. All right, now all our holes are drilled, it's time to assemble the tent. But you are going to need a friend to help you put it together. Jackie! There you go, Jax, it's all cut. Brilliant, let's assemble it. Yep. Okay, so we'll grab two big bits each and you need the longer tip at the end. Yep. Okay, and we'll just cross them over like that and we'll feed the thicker piece of dowel through. Oh, now, did you remember to cut the dowels a bit longer? Yes, yeah, so I did. I cut them 1,550 millimetres. Okay, that's great. That means it's going to give us a little bit more room to decorate. One at a time, we're going to grab the last two bits of dowel and thread them to the bottom. Last one. Thanks, Adam. It looks great. Yeah, no worries, Jackie. And just wait till you see what I add to it. Earlier, Adam showed us how to make this awesome A-frame tent, and today I'm going to make a cover for it. But I'm going to go one step further and stamp it with my own unique pattern. What you're going to need is some plasticine, a metal ruler, a sponge, scissors, elastic, thread, needle, ribbon, rolling pin, wool, fabric paint, palette, calico. Now the first thing to do is make your stamp and I'm going to make mine out of plasticine. You just need to knead it out into a flat disc and then once it's all nice and warm, Put it on your chopping board and roll it with your rolling pin. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to use my ruler to cut a triangle pattern in. Push it down. There's one edge of my triangle. Push it down. There we go. It's our triangle. Now I like to make a little handle so you, it's really easy. So just squash a bit of plasticine in the middle of the triangle and then you've got your handle. Now it's time to stamp our tent cover. So just get your calico out. I got my fabric cut to size at my local fabric store, which is 1300 by 2600. Now time for the stamping. I'm gonna use some navy blue triangles in the top row. There is my center line, so I'll probably start stamping maybe five centimeters under it. So get your stamp, get your sponge, dip it in the paint, and paint it on. Line it up to the fabric, press down. Make sure you press the corners, and lift it up. There's your first triangle. Now you just need to repeat that over and over and over and over again. There we go, that's our last triangle in the navy blue. Now it's time to wash your stamp and your brush and we're going to start a green line next. Now to make my pattern a little bit more interesting, I'm going to stagger the bottom line of triangles to the top. Now it's time to wash your stamp and brush again and do our last row, light blue. And just do the light blue line like the navy line. last stamp. But now you have to do the exact same process on the other side. Now all my stamping is done and dry, it's time for our final steps. To sew two bits of ribbon on the top and elastic around all corners to secure our cover to our tent frame. So let's get started. I've just cut a 60 centimetre length of ribbon in navy and I've got navy thread so it'll look hidden and we'll just sew it on where our top crease is. Just make sure you have an adult around when you're sewing because needles are really sharp. Okay, once you've finished threading, just tie a knot and then tie another one for safekeeping and then snip off the ends. So I've just cut my elastic about five centimetres long, fold it in half so it makes a little loop 
then pull up the corner of your cover and then just sew it in place. So just tie it off like you did with the ribbon by making two knots with the loose ends and then trimming them so it's nice and neat. And then you just need to repeat that process with the elastic on every corner and then the ribbon on the other side of the tent. Wow, that looks awesome. Time to hang it up. So just tie your ribbon around the top. Put it in a nice bow. And then put the elastic loops around the legs. Wow, that looks so amazing. Now all you guys have to do is get a little arty and do one yourself. Pots. I love pots. But I especially like putting beautiful things into my pots. I have tried so many times to grow a magnificent garden. And every time I do, I truly believe that I'm going to water it. So usually I'm left over with a few sad looking pots. Today we're going to fix that. We're going to give it a beautiful mountain-inspired design. All you need is a pot and some paint pens. The first thing you're going to do is grab a black paint pen. Now you're going to draw a line the whole way down the length of the pot, just like this. Whoa, you can do it freehand and it doesn't really matter if it's too wobbly. And you're going to keep doing that the whole way around the pot. You can pop them about four centimetres apart. Then, once you've done that, I want you to draw some smaller sloping lines between those two bigger lines. And keep doing this the whole way down. Once you've done that, move over to the next section and draw the same line with the sloping lines facing the other way. So continue with the black pen, but now what you're going to do is start colouring in some of those little spots. This is where you can cover up maybe some of the bad workmanship that you've done. <laughs> you can do this randomly, just pick any one that you like. Try to space it out so they're not all too close together. Now I'm just going to go around the pot and colour in some of the squares randomly. You can do this with different colours. So I've chosen to start off with a black, but I've also got blue, a pink, a bronze, and a green. But you can choose whichever colours you'd like. Beautiful. you have it, a beautiful pot. Now, all you have to do is plant something in it. I'm going to go find something. Plants! Plants, come here! Plants! I have a pot. Alexander and I entered my artwork into the Young Archie competition and I won. My favourite part of the artwork is the Harbour Bridge. I am very proud of how I did the diamonds on the top. I drew all of the outlines with crayons and then I painted the rest with watercolour. It's my friend Jihan and I've and he's been my friend for about a year. He said he thought he was famous and he liked having his artwork in the art gallery. The Archibald Prize is the oldest art prize in Australia. It's been going for 95 years and it's all about Australians and portraits of them. Anybody can enter the Archibald Prize, from kids right through to people who have been painting for years and years. The Archibald Prize is one of the most popular art exhibitions in Australia. We have over 800 people entering on average every year. 
Everybody loves the Archibald Prize, but we have a special prize just for kids. It's designed to get kids thinking about what a portrait really is and what it can be, where kids can make portraits of people that are special to them. I'm Lorraine Bennett and I'm Alexander's grandmother. We are extremely proud of him. Um, he has a wonderful mother and father and art and music we feel comes from the soul, from the inner person. His school loves it. They've got it up in writing outside the school. Congratulations, Alexander. My teacher said congratulations and all my classmates were really happy that I had won. I think I want to be a soccer player and an artist.